Welcome to Life Club. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful, Chiral Asitar. Chiral, are you ready to do this? I'm ready. All right, let's go. Chiral is the co-founder and CEO of Centerfin. They're an organization providing institutional quality wealth management solutions to everyone. Carol, excited to have you on. Tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Sure. Thank you for having me on, George. So um, on a personal level, I was actually born and raised in the former Soviet Union, what is now the Ukraine, which is why uh, this conflict that's happening there right now, this war that's going on is very, very personal to me. And I pray every day for some sort of uh, peaceful resolution there. But um, when I was nine years old, my family moved and settled in uh, Queens, New York, which is kind of the melting pot of the world. Um, you know, my parents being Russian, uh, Ukrainian immigrants wanted their son to be a doctor eventually. And so I was actually originally a pre-med student in college, um, discovered Wall Street kind of on my own by accident, got obsessed with it, decided that that's what I wanted to do uh, in terms of uh, my career. And um, so I was fortunate enough to get my, my foot in the door at Goldman Sachs right out of undergrad. Uh, right around that time, I got obsessed with the hedge fund industry, which at the time was fairly nascent. This is you know, 20 years ago or so and um, decided that you know all the smartest minds in the, in the world seem to be starting or, or going to work at hedge funds and so why not align myself uh, with that part of the industry so i joined within goldman um, the prime brokerage business which was uh, solely focused on working with uh, the hedge fund clientele that, that that goldman had so i spent the bulk of my career there uh, in that business uh, the last couple of years you know group called Capital Introductions, which is basically kind of standing in between hedge fund managers and institutional investors. Uh, that was a very cool seat. And that led me to one of my clients, uh, actually ex Goldman Sachs investors who started their own fund um, a, couple of, a couple of years prior to, to my joining them, uh, ended up hiring me to focus on kind of marketing, investor relations, business development, all sorts of non-investment related stuff. So um, to move there around the time of the financial crisis and, uh, and have been on the buy side effectively ever since. Um, and about six years ago now, after being recruited into a handful of roles um, that didn't work out for a, host, a whole host of reasons, decided to basically hang up my own shingle and became uh, a solopreneur, um, you know, really kind of bet on myself, had my kids around that time and, and wanted to do something a little bit more um, entrepreneurial. So, um, you know, kind of six years ago, uh, you know, stopped, stopped getting a, a W2. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, you know, taking, taking those kind of risks and, um, and eventually had this idea for what is now Centerfin and uh, decided to build that. And so the idea really came to me organically. I, um, my whole career on Wall Street, I've had friends and family coming to me over the years saying, you know, what do I do with my you know, retirement money? What do I do with the savings I got? Um, and I historically really had a hard time pointing them in the right direction because as you're familiar with the landscape out there for individuals is not great. And, and, you know, 20 years, you know, after I started in the business, it really hasn't improved that much. And so, um, I spent the bulk of my career interacting with very sophisticated institutions like family offices, endowments, foundations, pension funds. And so I learned a lot about how these types of very sophisticated inst institutions and, and, you know, large investors manage money for the long term, which is very, very different than what's available to individuals. And so um, the idea for Center for originally came to me as uh, a way to replicate that approach, but make it accessible. And so, you know, to, prior to, to starting this call, you, you know, we talked a little bit about accessibility. That's kind of part and parcel as to why we started Center for We wanted to create a higher quality solution than what's available out there, but make it available to a much broader audience. And so I put a team together right before the COVID crisis started, which my timing, as I always say, is impeccable. Um, but uh, but we, uh, we have a team that is now nine, uh, kind of half technology, half finance investment uh, backgrounds, very senior, um, you know, great, great team. Um, and, you know, we spent most of COVID uh, here, you know, me in New York City, kind of huddled in our, in our apartment with our two little kids, but building um, what is now Centerfin, we actually went live at the beginning of this year and uh, already up to a couple of million dollars of, of AUM uh, and growing really nicely and really excited for what's to come. 
Nice. <clears throat> well, I'd certainly appreciate, uh, appreciate stepping out on your own and, you know, from the moment you decided that to now having a, a team and you're, you're the thing that you wanted to create is now out into the world. So certainly congratulations to that. Um, and also for surviving COVID in an apartment in New York city with uh, two little kids, because I've got two little yeah. kids and I know how hard that is. So w- way to go on that one, Cairo. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. And you too. It's- uh, it's been a wild one the last couple of years for everybody. So talking about the problems with, with, with what's currently available or what was currently available before you launched, walk me through what, what you saw as some of those issues. Yeah, uh, it's a great question. And it's one I'm very passionate about. I can talk about it for a long time. Um, but I think it just comes down to the fact that when, um, you know, when you look at options available to individuals, the vast majority of them are rooted in uh, an approach that is referred to broadly speaking as 60-40, right? So some combination of um, of assets that are largely stocks and bonds, a mix of stocks and bonds. And then it's implemented in various ways. You know, certain certain folks um, will use, you know, ETFs and, and lower the fees. Certain folks will use mutual funds, you know, to try to, try to have active management. Um, but at the end of the day, it's really the same asset mix. And, um, and the difference between that and what, you know, some of these larger institutions that I've been facing off with for, for my whole career is that they don't only get access to those types of assets, they get access to other both alternative investment strategies and alternative assets. Um, and so that's what we wanted to do with Center Friend is we wanted to replicate that approach as closely as possible by providing people not just, you know, your traditional stock and bond mix, uh, but an actively managed mix of both traditional uh, assets like stocks and bonds, but also alternative assets and alternative investment strategies. And so, um, and so we, you know, for instance, and, and, and this is, you know, this kind of varies depending on the market environment we're in. So for instance, um, to kind of give you an example of how things have worked in real time, at the end of last year, um, we were already running uh, portfolios for a while. And we decided that um, it became pretty evident that we were going into a different regime change as it pertains to interest rates. The Fed um, had signaled it you know, time and time again. The market was still not really appreciating it. Um, but our view on the fixed income portion of client portfolios changed pretty significantly in that they became all of a sudden very risky, right? And so the part of client portfolios historically that people look at as the quote unquote safe part of the portfolio is actually in our mind became highly risky because of the interest rate risk. And so what we did is we paired back, you know, almost all traditional kind of fixed income exposure in client portfolios towards the end of last year, leaving only a very small amount of exposure in, um, in kind of intermediate term treasuries and, and tips, um, which, um, you know, are really a risk off asset and an inflation protected asset. Um, and what we did is we reallocated um, a lot of that exposure into assets that we thought could benefit from a, a, an inflationary environment with, um, you know, at the time, if you recall, even the Federal Reserve was, was still discussing as being transitory, but we viewed the probability of inflation as higher than that. And so we wanted to make sure we reflected that in client portfolios. And so that meant an allocation to gold, silver, copper, and, 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 and crypto actually as an asset. Um, and um, and so, you know, that's that's actually played out really well to kind of start 2022, as you're familiar with. Um, I'm sure, you know, it's, it's probably the worst start to kind of a traditional 60-40 stock bond portfolio in, you know, maybe ever, if not, you know, uh, I mean, 40 years, if not ever. Um, and um, and having assets like gold, silver, copper, crypto has not worked in this in this kind of inflationary regime yet. But um, it's actually it's actually worked out, worked out well. Um, and so that's kind of the, that's kind of one of the difference. The, the other, the, the other important difference is we actually believe in active management where it makes sense. And so the reason why active management has not worked for a whole host of, um, uh, for a whole host of folks out there historically, we believe is because the, um, the industry is largely, um, tied to kind of some sort of, uh, benchmark. And so, you know, if you look at traditional mutual fund, um, mutual fund will have a benchmark. Um, they, uh, you know, they honestly cannot raise money until they have a three-year track record. And if they're not outperforming their benchmark, they're going to have a hard time raising money. So it forces them to kind of hug, hug that benchmark. This has been talked about for decades and decades, still goes on today. Um, 
our view is that active management actually makes sense if you um, take a more of an absolute return approach and um, you're a part of markets that are less efficient, right? So, you know, a, a global stock mix is probably really hard for an active manager, but a small cap manager, you know, that's talented and, and knows what they're doing can, can probably do a really good job outperforming whatever benchmark there is. Same goes for, for other parts of um, markets like, um, you know, for instance, I spent a long time in um, with a distressed debt hedge fund. So, you know, some parts of the credit markets are, are really inefficient and that's where active management can make sense. And so, so we wholly believe that and that's where we want to use active management and client portfolios. Well, that, that, that uh, makes a lot of sense to me. Um, it doesn't make sense to your point when we have a large cap mutual fund that's actively managed. Like, okay, like really this needs, I need to pay a lot extra to have you pick between Coca-Cola and, you know, Apple. I don't think that that makes any sense, but in the different spaces that you're talking about, I think that there is a massive advantage and opportunity to, to be able to find that concept of, of absolute return. Could you talk a little bit more about what, what, what that is? Yeah, I think it has to do with the mindset of the manager themselves. And this is, this is kind of where our, our history, um, you know, on the, on the kind of investment finance side of the team, you know, we all come from the kind of hedge fund or alternative investment world. So um, decades and decades of experience and, and relationships. And, um, and I think that, you know, in partnering with managers that are used to managing more, um, you know, what are we you know, historically referred to as alternative investment strategies, um, or absolute return oriented strategies is, is really where we think, you know, you can find a high quality return. Um, and so what, what, what that really means is just, you know, going back to the well of, of, of kind of the hedge fund space that we've been in all of our careers, um, and finding, you know, not finding, but, you know, knowing, having relationships with managers, um, that are super good in kind of what they do. And so, um, like I, like I mentioned, you know, the two areas that are immediately of focus and, and, um, and make sense to us are, are small caps and you know certain parts of the credit world like the highly leveraged company universe. Um, you know these are areas where we know we've seen it time and time again. Certain managers that we know can generate excess returns uh, consistently. Um, so so that's that's kind of broadly speaking. The other areas that we um, that we really focus on are you know sector specialists within equities uh, um, and really on um, you know. Most of what we know historically is long short, but we would we would gravitate towards long bias strategies, and so um, that's another area of focus. And then you know longer term, you know as we as we scale, there are really other you know really cool things that we can do, including you know potentially things like private equity even for um, for you know individuals, which which you know as you know that that's not really accessible these days. No doubt. Nice. So. Can you compare, contrast Centerfin to uh, what an ordinary investor's idea of a robo advisor is? Yeah, so Centerfin is, is definitively not a robo advisor. Um, so a uh, robo advisor is generally a portfolio of low cost ETFs. Again, kind of you know very much built in um, in in that you know modern portfolio theory uh, sixty forty kind of equity bond mix, um, and it's you know it's the robo part of it is, is, as I think, referring to largely the fact that um, the, the portfolio is quote unquote managed, which means it's just rebalanced uh, at some predetermined period of either time or, or you know, percentage of, of weighting of the portfolio. Um, we actually think that's a disastrous approach um, right now because the world, you know, we, we've entered into a different kind of regime uh, since the financial crisis very recently. And, you know, just having a preset portfolio could could have very very bad results so you know we we we, we think of it closer to kind of the 1970s um where if you had just a kind of 60 40 stock bond portfolio you know you lost you know over the decade you lost you know between 30 and 50 percent of your money it was it was really devastating for people um and so we don't think you can have a kind of set it and forget it approach we think things need to be actively managed based on what's going on and so that's that's one big difference. Um, and the other difference is, is, is obviously these um, kind of active and alternative strategies and assets that, you know, none of these, you know, robo advisor platforms um, have at all. 
Yeah, that certainly does make sense. So from a from an investor experience standpoint, what is that process like? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Um, so what what uh, when when you know I set out to to build Centerfin, I knew that it needed to have a modern um, you know technological approach. So the user experience needed to be today. You know, let's face it, everybody uses their phones, um, and so we needed to build an app. And so that's what we set out to build as as kind of the way the client interacts with Centerfin. And so um, you know we've created a process where. You know, right now we're open for retirement accounts, so existing retirement accounts and roll, you know, 401k rollovers. Um, you can open your account and, and get the transfer started in under three minutes um, in our app. Um, and then you can, you know, basically see how your accounts be managed inside of the app and then we communicate with you via the app as well. And so one of the interesting things we learned is that um, about half of our client base, as we, were, we started talking to people about Centerfin even before it became live, um, really was fine kind of on their own if they had you know if they understood what we were doing they were fine downloading the app you know getting the transfer going and then you know kind of seeing how their money is managed and checking in for updates every once in a while and about half of them actually do want to have some sort of human touch point and so we said to ourselves that's fine you know if that's what our clients want we'll make that available and so um there's an ability inside the app to actually you know set some time up with our investment team and it's um it's a little bit of a borrowing from kind of the hedge fund industry where you know there's an investor relations function and so we kind of think about it more or less like that than a traditional kind of financial advisory uh function for for individuals where you know if folks want to ask about why we're positioned a certain way or you know if they're concerned about um something that you know they read in the in the press um that might affect their portfolio they can just schedule a time with us in in the app and they'll actually you know have access to uh, one of our investment team. Nice. And what are the what are the costs associated with it? Um, so good question. So um, we came up with a all in cost. So we have a wrap fee program, um, which means that you know all of the kind of creating and 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 administrative so so to speak costs are. Um, are wrapped up in that in that fee, and it's uh, one half of one percent a year, so it's fifty basis points annually. Nice, got it. Beautiful. Well, Cairo, people are ready for that difference making tip. What do you have for them? Uh, I, I guess I, I, you know, kind of beating a dead horse, but I think you know people should really take a look at where you know how they're invested, and you know if you find yourself invested in that kind of you know, 60, 40 approach, really, really take a look and, and think about whether or not that makes sense in this environment, because we really do uh, want people to understand that there's, um, you know, we're, we're in a potentially very different time than we've been in a long time. And, uh, and having a different approach, having alternative assets and strategies uh, would, you know, I think be very helpful to most people. Well, I think that that is great stuff that definitely gets, come on. Yeah, it is. A, it is. We have been conditioned, no doubt, to consume financial stuff the way that we've always sort of consumed it. And it's been packaged in that 60-40 sort of plain vanilla or plain chocolate, however you want to think about it, chocolate vanilla uh, wrapper or container. And so <laughs> getting access to alternative investments. And um, I feel like hopefully, hopefully your timing is 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 great with everything that's going on in the world because people are going to probably look around and say, okay, maybe there's a better way to do this. So speaking of that, Cairo, how can people, uh, how can people learn more about Centerfin and how can they engage? Yeah. No, um, so, you know, obviously you can check out our website and sign up there at centerfin.co and, um, and then me personally, I'm on Twitter. I'm trying to get more active on Twitter. My, uh, my, uh, my, uh, address is wall street Hobbs. Uh, W A L L S T H O B B E S. And so always happy to engage with people there as well. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, show Cairo your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Um, check out centerfin.co, C E N T E R F I N.co. Um, and is the, the app just under Centerfin, Cairo? Correct. Okay, excellent. And find them wherever you download your apps and then follow Cairo on Twitter as well under wall street Hobbs, W A L L S T H O B B S. We'll link all those in the notes of the show. 
Thanks again, Carol. George, thanks so much for having me. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. We are all in this together.